In this episode, I explore Shia Islam. Shia Islam is a subject we featured before here on FTD Facts, but now I'm introducing it as a part of our 10 Facts video series. So what's going on guys? My name is Leroy Kenton and this is FTD Facts. And now let's jump into the facts. There's a lot to learn, so listen closely to every single one of these facts that I'm gonna share. So starting off with number 10. Shia, also known as Shiite Islam, encompasses most Muslims who are not considered Sunni Muslims, which makes Shia Islam the second largest branch of Islam. Followers believe that the only Caliph Ali and his descendants are the legitimate successors to the Prophet Muhammad and they reject the first three Caliphs. The Shia population ranged between 320 million to 350 million worldwide. Now let's get into more specific details about the Shia population around the world. So the Shia majority countries are Iran, Iraq, Bahrain, Azerbaijan, Yemen, and also there's a larger Shia population in Syria and Turkey. In terms of the rest of the world, the Shia Muslim population makes up about half the population of the core Middle East. Now the nations where Shia Muslim form a considerable portion are, like I mentioned, Iran at 95%, Azerbaijan at 80%, Bahrain 75%, Iraq 65%, Lebanon 45%, also Yemen's 45%, Turkey 25%, they make up 35% of Kuwait, Afghanistan is just totaling at 20%, Pakistan it ranges from 20 to 25%, Saudi Arabia a little bit less at 15%, India they make up 20 to 25%, and in the United Arab Emirates they make up 20% and about 15 to 20% for Syria. Now as I mentioned in Iran, Shia Muslims make up the majority with 95% of the Muslim population in the country, but before that Iran was a Sunni majority country until 1500 when Shah Ismail the first conquered Iran and forced a conversion of Sunni Muslims to Shia Islam. The conversion continued for about 200 years during which the number of Shia Muslims increased dramatically. Now the distinct principles and institution of Shia Islam is the imamate. That word right there is used in Shia theology. It derives from the word imam and that means leadership and this teaching includes the idea that the successor of Muhammad is more than merely just a political leader. The Imam must also be a spiritual leader which means that he must have the ability to interpret the inner mysteries of the Quran and Sharia law. Shia Islam also consists of one majority school of thought and that's known as the Jafariya or the Twelvers and a few minor schools of thoughts are there as well like the Seveners, the Fivers and these names all refer to the number of Imams that they recognize after the death of the Prophet Muhammad. The term Shia however is is sometimes synonymously used with Jafaria Twelvers, but the term can also be applied to other schools of thought in the branch. Now in terms of prayer, why do Shias prostrate themselves on the earth? Well the Messenger of Allah used to pray on a Qumrah, which is a palm leaf mat large enough to place your face on while in prostration. The Prophet declared that the best place for prostration was the earth or upon something that grows from the earth. Also she is Islam has two of the most important holy cities, Al-Najaf and Karbala, which are located in southern Iraq as is the Great Mosque of Kufa. And this is sanctified as a site where Ali, the fourth caliph, lost his life in the 7th century. The Great Mosque of Kufa was built in the 7th century and it contains the remains of some of the very important people in Shia history. It has remains of Muslim Ibn Aqil, who was the first cousin of Imam Hussein Ibn Ali, his companion and Haini Ibn Urwa, and the revolutionary Mukhtar al thaqafi Now the Great Mosque has been redeveloped in various phases over the years and today it features a great elegant golden dome and Safavid tile work from the 17th and 18th centuries. Several sources attribute the construction of the Great Mosque of Kufa in the middle of the 7th century to the Caliph Omar. There are a few varying beliefs about the history of the mosque. Some believe that it was built on top of the temple constructed by Adam, the first man to ever live. While others say, nope, Adam didn't build it, rather Adam's bones were buried on the site after they were carried by Noah into the ark. The site was identified in Shia Islam as a place where Noah built the ark. Now another pretty interesting fact is Nikah 
muta. That phrase right there literally means pleasure marriage. And this is a private and verbal temporary marriage contract that is practiced in 12 -er Shia Islam. This type of marriage is conducted in the same way as a permanent marriage in order to make a man and woman physically halal or permissible or lawful in traditional Islamic law. However, a nikah muta is a temporary marriage that ends at a fixed period of time. Now, according to Shia Islamic law, to enter into this marriage, the bride must not be married. She must be a Muslim or belong to Al Akitab, which are the people of the book, which extends to Christians and Jews as well as others who follow the teachings of certain divine books like the Bible, Quran, and she should be celibate and she should not be young only if her father is not there and cannot give consent. Now at the end of the contract, the marriage ends and the wife must undergo ida, which is a period of abstinence from the marriage and sleeping with another man. So the ida is done so that it would be clear who the father of the child or children is in the case of the wife becoming pregnant during the temporary marriage. And the final thing I want to share is for Shia Islam, the five pillars or more correctly translated as the five principles of the religion, they are five fundamental principles of Islam no more or no less. The Shia branch considers the Sunni five pillars to be merely the most important obligations rather than them being the five pillars of Islam. So it's a little bit tricky but the five pillars according to Shias are the oneness of God which is Taweed, the justice of God, the Adl, prophethood which is Nabuwa, leadership of mankind that's Imama and resurrection is Mi'ad. Alright guys so that's all I have to share with you. This was a brief inside look into the world of Shia Islam. So let me know what are your thoughts about anything that I shared in this episode. Leave your comments down below. Now it's been great discussing Shia Islam with you and I can't wait to see you guys next time in another episode. Oh but guys wait before you head out definitely if you want to keep on learning tap this annotation right here. It will take you to another FTD Facts episode. Also my social media links are below in the video description section and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss any future FTD Facts episodes. Alright guys, stay awesome, stay educated, I'll see you in the next episode.